Bruce Grace, Product Specialist here at Atlas Copco. Today I want to talk to you about batch sequences on the MicroTorque system. A simple explanation of a batch sequence is running a specified tightening program X amount of times. The system looks for that many OK results before it lets the operator move on to the next batch. For example, this PCB board in front of me has six screws. In a batch sequence, I can select a specified tightening program for these six screws, and the system will not let me move on to the next batch until it has received six OK signals from the tightening. This ensures that all six screws were placed in the board and tightened correctly before the operator can move on to the next part. Batch sequences are a great way to error-proof your assembly process, even in this simple format. But what if I told you the MicroTorque system allows for even more features with the batch sequence configuration? The MicroTorque system has some unique features that can make your process more traceable and improve your error proofing. When you're setting up a batch sequence, you can run more than one batch sequence in the same configuration in the case that your part has more than one screw type and torque spec. You can insert an event step that will allow you to move in increments, set delays, collect information, control digital I.O. signals, and even insert some information steps to add some operator guidance on the screen. Let me show you an example. So here I've got a demonstration set up with the batch sequence configurator that's going to run through a bunch of the different steps that the system's capable of. But before we dive into the demo, let's take a look at the configurator. I do just want to point out the different types of steps. So here in my first step, if I move down in step type, there are three different types of steps in the batch sequence configurator either a batch, which is what we explained before, you're going to select a specified tightening program and tell that tightening to program to run X amount of times, an event, which is going to be able to control digital inputs, outputs, look for identifiers and things like that, or information, which will solely be information that populates on the screen for the operator to see. So let's dive into the demo. Here my first step is what's called an event step, an advanced scan. And the advanced scan is going to be looking for an identifier. Now an identifier is something that I've created in the system before I put this configuration together. All I did essentially was I took the barcodes off of these parts, I scanned them and I said these barcodes belong to these parts. So in this step I have an advanced scan and I'm looking for that specific barcode to move in increments in the batch. So in the first step I've also got an information text. So this is what's displaying on the screen. Scan the aluminum plate. You can see it here in the configurator and you can also see it here on the screen, scan the aluminum plate. So the first step in the batch is obviously scan the aluminum plate. It saw that identifier, it said it was okay and it moved on to the next step, which is a similar step, an event step, advanced scan, and it's looking for a different identifier, one that we called the PCB. So now it's looking for this barcode and it says in the information text in the configurator and on the screen, scan the PCB. Now that I've scanned the PCB, it's moved on to the next step, which is an event step, and it's looking for a digital input. And the digital input is digital input 11, which I've identified before creating this configurator. It's looking for a positive flank. And the information text is put the plates in the jig and close it. So if I put the aluminum block in and I put the PCB in, now it's going to look for that positive flank, which is this jig being closed. And if you listen to it, it's automatically going to move through step four and into step five, and I'll explain why in a second. But you can hear the jig lock. So now the jig is locked, the two components are in there. It moved right through step four, which is an event step, which is an output step. So it's saying as soon as it saw this positive flank in step three that the jig was closed, now I'm going to send a digital output, and we identify that output as digital output number one, which is an output we set up to lock the jig. So as soon as it was closed, it locked, it moved through step four. And now we're on to step five, which is another event step, a digital input step. It's looking for digital input 12. In this step, we've got the configuration button set up on the tool to act as a digital input. And all it's saying here is we put an in information text, tighten four black short screws. It's saying, hey, I want you to send a digital input and identify that you're going to tighten four black screws. So in the configuration of the tool, we have it set up. If we double tap the tool, it sent that input, the digital input 12, um, and it's now moved on to the next step. The next step is the basic batch step that we talked about at the beginning of the video. So in a batch, now uh, we know that we're going to tighten those four black short screws, and we want to use PSET number 25, which is a tightening program that we made specifically for these short black screws. 
the configuration is going to look for four OK results before it moves into the next step in the batch configuration. So I've got four short black screws here. Got an OK signal. Green. This is the last one, so as soon as I complete this screw and get an OK signal, it's going to move on to the next step in the batch configuration. So now I've got a green, you heard a beep that's saying the batch is OK. You also saw a blue light. I have the tool set up so whenever a batch is complete, not a batch sequence, but just a batch, you're going to see a blue light. And it's going to move on to the next step, which is similar to the step prior to the one we just did. It's looking for a digital input, number 12, positive flank. And it's just identifying that you need to tighten the two silver long screws. We have it in the information text. It's looking for you to acknowledge on the tool that you've read this. So we're going to double click the tool configuration button again. And now it's moved on to the next step, which is another batch step. Now I have two long silver screws that go in the middle of the PCB board. Uh, and this batch step is set up so that we created P set number 27. You can see it's a batch step, P set number 27. That's a tightening program that we created specifically for the long silver screws. Again, two OK signals before it moves to the next step. So we've got one OK signal, and as long as we get an OK signal here, it's going to move to the next step. Now if you noticed, we heard the jig unlocked and it actually moved through the next step pretty quickly, but let me break it down. So after our batch was completed, it knew to move on to the next step, and the next step was uh, an event step, an output, digital output 01, which remember was our unlock. So as soon as we completed the batch and it saw two OK signals, it sent that digital output signal to unlock the jig. You audibly heard it. Now we can open this with the completed part. You also just heard a beep there, which is step number 10. As soon as it sees a negative flank from the digital input 11, which is opening the jig, and we have information text here you know, explaining this to the operator, you need to open the jig when the tightening is ready, it knows now that this batch sequence is completed. I've put this part in here. All the screws are placed. We can rest assured that all the screws that the components need are there, um, and that they're tightened correctly, and that the component is good to go and the batch sequence is completed so we can move on to the next part. This has been an overview of batch sequences and how to configure them on the MicroTorque system. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to your Atlas Copco representative. Thanks for watching.